Hi everybody, this is Dr. Sadri. I'm here in Newport Beach, California, board certified ophthalmologist. Just absolutely delighted to be here with you again. One of the topics that comes up a lot is upper eyelid droopiness, or what we call dramatic chalasis or ptosis. This is a term often used and it's sort of confusing for patients because most patients just equate that to just cosmetic or what we call aesthetic needs. In other words, they feel like their upper eyelid droopiness is only affecting their what we call aesthetics or the way they look. And there's certainly a lot of evidence of that. And as time goes on, we all get older. Father time allows us to have aging of the face. The upper eyelids are no different. Certainly there's an aspect of that. But really the focus of today's discussion is do upper eyelids really lose our ability to see. In other words, if I have upper eyelids that are droopy, does that affect my eyesight? And the answer is it can and certainly is. It's such a big problem now that most Department of Motor Vehicles now in our application when we have patients actually looks at visual field or peripheral vision loss. In other words, if a patient comes in and they have upper eyelids that are low enough or hanging down low enough, it can actually affect what we call peripheral blind spots or what traditional blind spots when you're driving a car. Let's unpack that and talk more about that. The upper eyelid region is really made up of three tissues. It's the skin, the muscle, and the fat and it's connected to the lower eyelid complex, and this is called the obracularis muscle. It's the thinnest actual muscle in the body. And typically, there's two things that can occur. One is the skin part can hang over, we call that dramatic chalasis, or the muscle is slipped, and you can kind of see sometimes that the, the eyelid height is not the same. In other words, the eyelids close, or the patient actually looks like they can't see, or they're asleep. And, and that's a common complaint. The patient comes in, people tell me, I look sleepy, I can't see, and my peripheral vision is affected. So when they see the doctor, what we generally recommend is we take photographs, and we'll show you before and afters. But essentially what we're doing is looking for evidence of what we call, what's the eyelid height look like? There's usually something called MRD or what we call margin reflex distance, which is technically describes the number of millimeters from the spot of the light onto the cornea from the height of the upper eyelid. And that can demarcate how long or what's the distance there. Typically anything below two millimeters, it's called ptosis or upper eyelid droopiness. That certainly can affect sight, and we use diagnostic tests like visual field findings to be able to corroborate that. In other words, when a patient comes in, we want to see both qualitatively and quantitatively whether they have upper eyelid droopiness. And that essentially, when you're driving a car, it can affect your peripheral vision and force things like car accidents and things that are not good. So when the patient comes in, we do a full evaluation. And let's just say for the sake of argument, they do have upper eyelid, that is bad enough for treatment. Then what does that treatment look like? And does that hurt? Is it warranted or should I have it? And really ultimately it comes down to two things that I talk about is if a patient is happy with their situation, even though they have peripheral vision loss, it's really up to them. They elect to have the surgery or not. And number two, let's say they wanted to actually eyelid surgery. The eyelid basically procedure is an outpatient, in and out type of treatment. It's usually given with a local sedation and topical or what we call oral or IV sedation just to relax the patient, what we call MAC or monitored anesthesia care. And it's outpatient. So typically what we do is we either use a treatment plan that includes taking the skin and the muscle and tightening it up. If it's that's just what we call dramatic chalasis or just the skin part. If the patient actually needs a muscle treatment to what we call enhance the opening of the eyelid or ptosis repair, then they're gonna need a little bit of a deeper treatment, which basically involves tightening the muscles of the upper eyelid region. The same thing is for the lower eyelid region. So typically my hands it takes about 10 minutes per eyelid. It's outpatient, doesn't hurt. There is a post-operative period that I always call it the bar fight look for the patient, where they have some blacking and bruising, and that's normal and typical for it. And so the best thing to do is understand that the inflammation and the swelling can cause temporary swelling around the eyes, and the patient may or may not be able to go back to work. So ice really helps. I typically recommend is icing it right after treatment about 10 minutes on six times a day for the first two or three days. And then what we do is give a small amount of ointment, anti-inflammatories to resume activity. So very, very rapid recovery, painless, and patients really enjoy it. The other thing that typically comes up is patients really tell me that they just look and feel better about themselves and they can see better. And so we're absolutely delighted 
to provide that for our patients. The other thing I would tell most patients is make sure that your eye surgeon feels comfortable doing this type of treatment and have a long history of doing this type of therapy because it is one of those procedures that gets better and better as there's more surgical experience. So with that said, we're always delighted to have you. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you find it informative and there'll be others more to come. Thank you.